Let's talk about some of the very important topics which have been of concern for the environment. So let's first talk about the weather impact and the meteorology. As soon as the month of winters enter, you have issues of smog uh, gaining priority in the regions of Delhi. You have air pollution issues that come into light. And that's because mainly of the crop burning that is seen in the regions of Haryana. Now, what recently has been talked about is bringing in uh, BS6 norms. Now, what is BS6? six norms and how in Delhi we monitor the air quality. So when we talk about air quality, you have the certain index which varies from 0 to 500. Uh, the lower levels talk about greener environment so you have the colors as green and the higher levels talk about hazardous conditions which have the uh, values of red and the variations meanwhile similarly we have lot of particulate matter which is seen which is mainly particulate matter 2.5 and 10 you have uh, various five different oxides so nitrous oxides you have particulate matters hydrocarbons carbon monoxide and sulfur dioxide which are major parameters to understand the air quality of a region in delhi mainly we say the industrial use uh, the burning of the furnace oil and pet coke have been major reasons for uh, the issues of air pollution and as of as a result uh, these burning of the pet coke burning of the furnace oil have been totally banned in the regions of uh, delhi and its vicinity also since we are talking about moving to bs6 norms what has happened as we are bringing down uh, the particulate matter by 80 percent and that's a significant reduction amount that we have seen so if we look onto the picture we can understand how from bs4 to bs6 the content of the sulfur particulate matter uh, is decreasing and similarly you have the lead proportion that has uh, decreased in the parts per million so we are talking about better norms and better governance and Delhi is one of the first uh, countries to have it the next is the issues of desertification which have been addressed in the recent UN uh, convention for desertification the statistics have revealed that Himachal Pradesh alone has 41 percent of the area that is slow and gradually turning into deserts you have lots of winds droughts and excess rain conditions that are seen and even the areas which have uh, wheat production which is significantly seen in those regions we have seen water scarcity that is coming up a lot of land which requires a special amount a specific amount of uh, moisture uh, you see that they are losing those crops so desertification has become one of the major threats then comes the issues of sustainable development for the global agenda for 2015 you have the idea to end the poverty to protect the climate uh, the protect the environment and the planet as such so you have 17 different uh, sustainable development goals that have been laid down and the idea is to protect the environment so the various reports say the poorest of the poor nations of the sub-saharan regions in africa which is mainly the Djibouti and Eritrea, have excellent geothermal sources so how uh, power generating or power generation could, could be switched from one form to another becomes very very important Important and Djibouti and Eritrea become some of the common questions that could be part of your examination paper. The next is emissions of carbon dioxide um, is causing slowly and gradually mass extinction because of the global warming. Uh, it is expected that the proportion of the carbon which is stored inside the earth is a very higher proportion that is seen over the earth which is less than one percent now again if we talk about the volcanoes that are emitting the carbon emissions it is around 280 to 360 million tons of carbon dioxide emitted every year that is by far 40 to 100 times lesser than the carbon dioxide that we emit through the traffic and the industrial or human activities that is there so definitely checking the amount of carbon going into the atmosphere is again very very important multi drug resistant tb has been a very uh, a very major issue of concern the major affected areas are mainly maharashtra uh, uttar pradesh and rajasthan region you have lots of tb cases coming in and over the years what we have seen mainly in the hiv infected parent, uh, patients you have uh, the proportion of multi drug resistant tuberculosis that is gaining significant uh, jump so what we require is uh, talking about prevention 
and control for the drug resistant tuberculosis cases that are seen so controlling the amount of infection providing a kind of second line of drugs is very very important when it comes to climate change you have the world meteorological organization which is working and talking about the intense marine heat waves stronger storms coming in and there is a kind of jump in the marine heat waves from 20 to 50 percent that is recorded and that is expected by 2081 so there is a change definitely coming on the special report on the ocean and chirosphere in the changing climate has talked about the evidences of increase in the percentage of storms which is four to five times as compared to the previous decades so by these weather related phenomena you have numerous people displacement taking place numerous refugee problems developing in a lot of internal displacements coming up global oxygen uh, cycle getting imbalanced also you have the atmospheric circulation which is governed by El Nino is getting affected so El Nino we have discussed in one of our separate lectures so you can just go back and refer that again and it's believed that by 2100 we would have nearly five to time five to seven times higher amount of global warming mainly in the ocean so we can say ocean warming warming that would take place and higher amount of heat that could be seen also a lot of the seas are warming and the amount of carbon dioxide emissions that are seen from the various countries if we look you have the highest proportion jump a uh, kind of uh, exponential jump that has been seen for china india also has registered a significant increase among the sources the highest source as of now is coal and slowly and gradually we are talking about moving to non-renewable sources of energy or cleaner sources of energy where we are talking about wind energy solar energy as a substitute international solar alliance is in uh, development in this line so if we talk talk about four of the top highest greenhouse gas emitters those are america japan brazil and australia and these have refused to have commitments to un climate change summit uh, also you have countries like saudi arabia and oil producing nations which did not participate in it but definitely the idea to cut greenhouse gas emissions is very very important and the cut is expected by 2050 and if that does not go on the warming would increase to nearly 2.7 degrees celsius to 3.7 degrees celsius so that would be a kind of significant increase now talking about some other uh, news you have mudumalai tiger reserve area you have kumbarkars and uh, kuruk nayaks as some of the major tribal areas uh, tribes that are found in these areas you have numerous tribal uh, families which are associated to this region and a lot of kind of criminal activities that take place also you have the schedule caste and tribe prevention of atrocity act that was very very important similarly to this in the ravines of uh, gujarat you have the regions of kheda panchmal vadoda and anand the four districts a high amount of soil erosion activities have been recorded uh, also you have seen such activities in the regions of uttar pradesh gujarat madhya pradesh in Rajasthan uh, the foundation of ecological security has been working in this region it is a kind of non-profit ravine reclamation project that has been running through the regions of uh, Anand then you have WMO the World Meteorological Organization which has been working day in and day out for along with the army navy and weather agencies publishing the reports for weather forecasting without human intervention so a lot of uh, computer simulation goes in you are talking about much more international collaborations for the same so better forecasting systems you have climber cell as one of those eq weather as another of those uh, high resolution atmospheric forecasting is very very important and national oceanic and atmospheric uh, administration which is one of the world's largest climate data provider by united states is very very important so the business aspects and the private players become very very important AccuWeathers you have uh, the company led by the uh, Barry Lee and this is a kind of privately owned uh, for profit weather forecasting company uh, most of the records are very very uh, I would say up to the mark and there are con uh, continuous computer simulation models coming in in the field similarly you have a lot of pros and cons for the same when you have a lot of public private partnership you ensure that 
that infrastructure solutions come up at their best uh, also you are trying to reduce any kind of unnecessary delays if there can be uh, when there is public private partnership it can lead to higher cost and higher burden uh, because of the public partnership there could be a kind of disadvantage on the side of uh, relying on to the rules and the procedures and uh, the uh, the system that has to be followed which can negatively affect the system but as i said clima base uh, clima cell is one of uh, a startup which is based in boston in america with uh, around 100 employees and working on internet of things and all kind of smart vehicles street cameras with wireless uh, systems talking about accurate weather forecasting reso uh, resources and those data are being so sold to numerous companies uh, which are using those data for as a kind of satellite data similarly you have other companies which are dealing with it ship from kochi in india is talking about weather forecasting you have skymet which is talking about uh, various sectors be it power be it agriculture you also have you numerous us based weather forecasting companies then we talk about geographical indicators uh, gi is a tag that is given for understanding that that region has something very very unique for example madhubani paintings from bihar oranges from nagpur you have rasgullas from west bengal similarly you have murugan temple in tamil nadu which has got a gi tag for its prasad which is offered to the deity and the devotees and it's a kind of mix of jaggery banana and ghee so that's a gi tag for the murugam prasadam that is being talked about these uh, gi tags are a requirement for a trips agreement so india is a member of of uh, wto and it has enacted the geographical in uh, geographical indication of goods uh, act which came into force in 2003 and through that you have a legal agreement between uh, the wto nations now uh what has been seen is the gap in the income disparities that has been seen and it has been observed that the poor are no longer moving to the higher income brackets so this has impacted or brought about a stagnation in the middle class and the upper middle class and therefore uh, there has been a impact to the economy there have been preference to the domestic economy and uh, sometimes when people are moving to the foreign economy there is a downturn for the domestic economy so there has been a kind of uh, income switches that is taking place which is affecting the economic structure of the company also when we talk about agricultural production uh, you have a lot of digital mobilization that has gone into and because of this digital mobilization you have seen upi payments coming in bhim mobile interface coming in and all those are made to make the life and the process much more smoother much more simpler and even now you cannot think about these systems going down for a day also we have cash 22 rural urban continuum which has been developed where individuals cannot void Uh, any kind of uh, rules or limitations that are being brought about and this is a situation where let's say a bank will never issue a kind of uh, loan if there is a need for the money so uh, that is the main idea and therefore it's called as cash 22 so you have a uh, dem demarcation for the urban areas we in india we say a population of 5000 a non agricultural activity where males are involved with 75% of the males involved in non agricultural activity and a density of 400 people per square kilometer if these three criteria meet you say that that is an area where you have the census town demarcation that is seen so 5000 of population more than 75% of the males engaged in non agricultural activities and then you also have 400 persons per square kilometer of the uh, population density that is seen uh, in india you have the demography that is changing quickly and a lot of migration from rural to urban area taking place so there has to be a kind of rural urban continuum where the rural areas do not evacuate out or do not just uh, remain barren i could say now coming about some of the important mcqs that could be part of this so mudumalai as i said uh, katunayaks and uh, kurumbas are the two main tribal areas which are seen in the mudumalai tri uh, tri uh, tiger reserve areas in tamil nadu 
the next is uh, fortification of the grains take place and that's basically for iron folic acid and vitamin b12 uh, we also have the oran tribe which is seen in the regions of jharkhand odisha and chhattisgarh you have international climate action day being celebrated on 24th of october a lot of uh, situations of uh, blocking the gullies plantation issues have been seen in the regions of khorwad in the anand district of gujarat similarly uh, you have the wo mo which has been a lot in this edition which is the world meteorological organization and the headquarters of which are based in geneva so this becomes very very important you have nearly 193 countries and 54 uh, 15 telecom hubs which are part of the world meteorological organization you have the headquarters of ibm which is located at amrong uh, in new york similarly you have numerous uh, weather forecasting super computers that are coming up in india it's mainly the prithush and the meher that is seen and also you have the national center for weather forecasting for medium range which is being established in noida in uttar uh, uttar pradesh so those are some of the key highlights from this edition we'll be bringing a quick summary of the important topics every fortnightly so stay tuned with further upcoming editions and two of the very important topics i repeat again are the bs6 norms comparison to the euro6 norms and also talking about Uh, the issues of desertification uh, the sustainable development goals so with this we complete this session have a good day